This is the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Hi, everybody. On the show Hi. today, we caught up with uh, tennis player John Millman. He yeah. has a great chat. That's really good. All yeah. about pig strings. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah, we certainly do. Uh, people sometimes eat weird things, but then also people sometimes eat things weirdly. And we are talking about consumption crimes this morning. I thought that was a highlight of my oh, day, you to be loved honest. it. So oh, I certainly oh, did. Oh, um, chat. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about simple noises that drive you insane as well. And speak to the mayor from Wanneroo. And I think you realise by now that we are very downtrodden. Downtrodden. Workers here at Nova 937. Everybody else gets a lot of yep. stuff yep. and no. it doesn't apply to us. You'll find out what's going on. Downtrodden. This is Nathan Nat and Sean. We good. Yeah. On Nova 937. Let's go. 556, Nathan Nat and Sean. What up? Oh, everything's up. People were talking about how hot it was last night, but we're all in air conditioning, so that's pretty no. cool. No, I didn't have my aircon on last night. Um, didn't you? No, just a ceiling fan. I didn't find it that hot. Can oh. I say, um, my, I just got aircon on, uh, installed for mum and dad at their house. Yeah, yeah. So they've got a split system. Are they living it, now. Eh? They're living it, because mum was um, in that scenario where she had a spray bottle with one of those fans, those yes. mist- misting bottles. And was she sleeping under a wet tea towel? Because that, that was the breaking point for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was, just, um, it was just terrible, and they, ju- they just had an air conditioner in the bedroom, so now they've got one in the laundry room. Uh, like, Dad has now become the controller of the air conditioner and Dad tells Mum when he deems it's hot enough for her to have oh, it on. And, of course, they have very different <laughs> opinions yeah. about that. Because Mum is going through the, 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 the menopause. The pause over and over. She's been going through the pause for a decade now um, and she just burns up and Dad, like, is on the other thing, feels the cold yes. really quickly. So so Dad has now deemed himself the... Um, so it's the never con- on. The controller. It's never they, on, they were, it? it wasn't on yesterday. It wasn't yeah. on yesterday. Uh, um, the one yeah. thing, that ha- oh, we have a problem in my household because they say that the setting should be on 24. And yeah, mine's, be on, mine's always on 24 now. Mine's, oh, on, mine. mine's on 22. Mate, ours is on about 18. I <laughs> no. Know change it, I know, I know, change it to Don't 24. Worry. 24 is actually cool enough because I think that we, because when you're in a hotel, right, you always put it down to the lowest possible thing and turn it on the highest because it's not your electricity. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you have it on 24-7. But when you're at home, all you need to do is have the room feel comfortable. But yet I think we're, we're, um, uh, we all think that it needs to be freezing because that's aircon. Nath, I go and cha- I go and change it all the time because you got those iPad things that you just go and change yes. a piece of cake. And uh, the bastards at my house, they just, <laughs> they just change it back. I cannot convince my wife that is saving electricity, yes. by the way. Oh, oh I, I 100% is. Yeah. No pain? Yeah. I'm even thinking of going up to 25 degrees because sometimes a little well, bit Well, then don't chilly. turn it on. Oh, look at you. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. Great this is your chat. version of heat training. <laughs> this could be your version of heat training going up to 25. And yeah. then suddenly I start going above the temperature. Yes. It's a 38 degree day and I put on 39. <laughs> <laughs> You're living in a sauna. <laughs> Saunas are all the rage. They're all the rage. Later this morning, uh, you'll get schooled. Um, that's where we ask you questions about a particular school subject. Mm. And whoever answers the last question correctly wins a thousand bucks cash. Not bad. We're going to talk to John Millman as well from the Australian oh, yeah. Open. Yeah, okay. No okay. Aussies left in there. Nah, nah. And yeah. uh, more opportunities <laughs> for you to live free for 23. Uh, we'll give you a, a chance of that a little bit later on, but remember, just go in air with us anytime this morning and you're anytime. in with the shop. Whatif.com helps Aussies make the most out of every trip. You can book a hotel, flight, surfboard and snorkel, all before you can say Brecky Buffet. Jump on the What If app and get started. What If it's Aussie for travel. How'd you go last night? Did you think it was a hot night? Ah, uh, we had the aircon on. Uh, did you? Yeah, did you yeah. guys? So I had the doona on. It's a different way of living. <laughs> oh my god! I know you had that whole year when you're in Mount Lawley. It was hell in Maylands. Maylands. Yeah. Maylands. yeah. Oh my god! It, it should be a crime to build a house in WA without aircon. Yeah, no, I agree. Calling for it. Yeah. 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 Whenever I Airbnb a house in Dunsborough, um, they only have aircon in the living areas and mm. never in the lounge rooms. Oh. Um, and they always say because the night breeze comes in, you don't believe them, but then at night it's actually quite cool. <laughs> um, but I literally a couple of years ago I had to go and buy a fan because there was no fan in there. And the woman that I was, uh, that I, uh, you know, the, the host of it, she thought I was crazy because I thought that I needed a fan in like 35 degree weather. No, 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 I needed one. I was down there, same. That same year that we caught up, no, yes. that house that we that were staying. That yeah, was that, that year. We were staying in that house. That yes. had no, no oh, air conditioning. Oh, that was muggy, that house. Yeah, and um, because it was very green. It was designed very green. Oh, okay. So, so, so it's like, like leave your environmental 
bloody ideas. So it's supposed to have passive heating and cooling and cross ventilation and all the rest of it, all except of, it didn't. Of yeah, so all the uh, all, all the cool wind at night, which is supposed so to. So the wind the was obviously down. blowing the wrong yeah. way. It was an yeah. It was cooking me to death. Yeah, whoever designed that, they got their wires crossed. They designed it to be super muggy that yeah. house. So you're in. <laughs> the Nathan, Matt, and Sean podcast. Harry does a lot of social media with a guy named Josh Garlop, don't you, Harry? I uh, certainly do. Yeah, a little bit yes. of extracurricular activities. Yes. Yeah, and great Josh videos. Garlop was at the Australian mm. Open, and he said well, something that was can only be described as a, a, a crime. Shocking. It was yes. shocking. It was a, uh, someone sitting there eating a hot dog. Yes. And um, the hot dog firstly had no sauce on it. Yeah, it was literally just a sausage in a bun. And you know what? A hot dog with no sauce in a hot dog bun, because the hot dog buns don't look like they're, you know, the most freshest things no, ever. No, they're it not. It just looked like just a very dry experience. It did. <laughs> and uh, the person proceeded to break off just little sections of the hot dog and just eat it like... Yeah, at the beginning there was kind of a bit sticking out. Yeah, uh, yeah there the was. End of, and so she broke off, broke that. She's, uh, it was a woman, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. She was eating like a lady, I don't obviously. I know how she identifies those. So. Maybe I, I'm she, okay with the breaking off the end of the, you know. Yes, maybe that, they were concerned that, that they were going to end up on TV, yeah. like yeah. deep throating a hot dog, and so she was just <laughs> erring on the side of course. But if you're single, that's can a good I say? Thing, no, but can I say? I don't think there was anything erotic. If it's a Pluto pup and you're ramming that down your throat, then that's one thing. But if it's a hot dog, it's got a bun around it. No one's really thinking. You know? Well, I just think I don't you know. don't We're want to take immature. that risk. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, just, oh, I, I never judge would. anyone eating a hot dog. I will judge someone eating a Pluto pup. That's why if I eat a Pluto pup, I go around the corner and do it in secret. <laughs> <laughs> it's a secret shame for a lot of reasons, really. <laughs> what is your eating on a stick, though? I think they were talking about this. Uh, in the article that they put up on news.com.au, they were talking about a woman in the US Open four years ago, and um, she caught a lot yes. of controversy. She was dipping chicken fingers into a cup of soft drink. Yes. Oh, I remember that's that. Not, that's not right. Yeah. And then she said, no, you don't... Don't, don't knock it till you try. It's actually delicious, and I was hungover, she said, but hang, hangovers <laughs> don't really explain that to me. No, no, no. no. Um, I mean, it would depend greatly on the yeah. what soft drink it was. Yeah. I, would oh, now, you do it in Fanta? No, they couldn't. Oh, no. No. But then again, that would be a flavour that would cut through. Maybe you want a flavour that cuts But in Coke, through. like Coca-Cola... You can roast a chicken with Coca Cola, so Coca-Cola chicken. They, they do marry. Yeah, but, yeah, but, they, but there's a whole lot of heat involved there. There's <laughs> <laughs> owls in the oven, isn't there? Um, something happens to the coat. Uh, when I was down Dunsborough, I had jetted down to the local Coles, and then I walked out there, and there was a guy eating like a sandwich, just a normal sandwich yeah. on yep. the um, on the pole, um, mm-hmm. sitting on one of those wooden pole things yep. wherever. Anyway, and. Um, he just and I, he, he pulled his sandwich open. He pulled up one half to his mouth, and then he just bit it from the middle. Now, for but that's me, where the best that's strange. Stuff is. No, but like for yeah. me, don't you? And this is only I'm going to check with you guys because for me, I ate a sandwich like the triangle yeah. from corner to corner. Do you ever just go straight into the middle? Because then yeah, you've sometimes. left yeah. just with like a crust. Yes, I but think I you'll think... find if you've ever seen the tip top ad back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah but they always the do that. People on ads don't eat food properly. I they... think they then <laughs> it, it depends on the filling because if the filling's about to fall out because it's stuffed so full, that's the best way to do it because you need to get it before it drops out. So if it was a very full sandwich, yeah, you would absolutely eat it that no, way. No, I have never eaten a sandwich. I eat from corner around to the next corner. Yeah, but that doesn't. It's it's not. That doesn't make it wrong. No, but but, but, but isn't it weird to me? It was yeah, wrong. Okay, that's because I've cool. never experienced. Like just well, to me, I was yes. like, that's not. No, right. he's just different, Nathan. What, yeah. wrong. what is wrong <laughs> is the way you've eaten a pie, which we've heard this morning. Our producer Amy started off yes. by saying her husband cuts a pie up into little and pieces, puts it on a plate, and basically smashes it until there's not until it just looks like one big mess, and then pours sauce on it yep. and eats it with a fork. So, so, so Amy you, goes, oh, and then Nat and Sean were like, oh my god, <laughs> yeah. that's ridiculous. And then I went, I do that. I will eat a pie normally if I'm just out and about and on the fly with a yeah, pie. Yeah. Yeah, but when I'm at pie. home and I'm going to like put a pie in the oven, um, I will cut it up and then I'll pour gravy over it and then I'll just use the fork <laughs> to... Just to fork it in. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do uh, want to congratulate you on the use of extra gravy because that's always a winner in a pie. But yeah, that, you can't eat a pie like that. Well, I mean, the, the, the point of a pie is, is it was actually made to be held yeah. in your hand. That's, that's a pie on the fly. That's a pie on the fly. Yeah. We want to know uh, <laughs> about a f- consumption crimes. So we're not talking about what you're eating. We're talking about how you're eating and why people think that it's wrong. Mm. <laughs> Or wait, you might cop a bit of stick about the way you do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's hear it. Yeah. Give us a call, 13 24 10. Or is there somebody in your life that eats something a bit strangely and you're like, I'm not sure that that's the correct way to do it? Yeah. Yep. We're going to give somebody uh, tickets for them and three mates to see briefs 
Dirty Laundry at fun. Fringe World. If you want to see what that's about, check out my Instagram and see what eyeful I got. Fringe World superstar briefs are back with their hit new show, Dirty Laundry. Don't be jealous. Head to fringeworld.com.au to grab your tickets. This is the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. We're talking about when, well, it's not what you eat, it's the way you eat it, and it's not the usual way. Bonnie's in High Wickham. Good morning, Bonnie. Morning, Sean. How are we? Good. I'm looking forward to hearing this one because I think if people have a um, a particular way of eating... Yes. What have you got for us, Bonnie? Well, I've got three daughters, but out of the three, one of my daughters can't eat corn on a cob. <laughs> Loves it. But what she does is she stands it up on the plate, mm. she gets a knife, she mm. cuts every cob little kernel off, puts it on a plate, then she picks it up with a fork. Why don't I just buy a can? Um, I <laughs> do you do this, Nathan? Don't mind that. Sometimes I just don't want to get my like just like just be growling. <laughs> Come on, growling. If I corn on the cob, you're supposed to have a little stick in the end of it. <laughs> that is, I wanted That's you to keep going really when you said it. Yeah. I was like, I oh, what get I was it out saying. there, mate. But I just, I just, I just like, and I just got stuff all over you. I face. think it was an accurate call. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with corn on the cob is you get the little bit stuck in you your do, teeth, nah. which you don't get if you cut yeah, the corn. Yeah. No, clearly, that, that, lot, but that's the thing, clearly that it, daughter yeah? is a lady. I just like I get the lady okay, thing. Course, if, yeah. if you're which, which Bonnie, Palace, I am a lady, lady so I connect with her. <laughs> um, so yes, no, I get I get where she's coming from. So I don't think that's. But if you're in the throes of your own house and it. nobody's looking, surely you'd just eat it like corn on the cob. If you're at Buckingham Palace, it'd be different. You'd no. be cut. What are the chances I'm, you're at if, Buckingham if I, Palace? If I have to ram my <laughs> face in something, Sean, and be. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not for that. me. Um, no, thanks, no. Bonnie. You decided that a few years ago. <laughs> Louise you? is in Quinn's. Hello. Good morning. Hi, Hi Louise. Louise. Hi, okay. Louise. Who, who eats what weirdly? So my brother, when he was a big strapping lad after school, he used to get home, pour his raw pasta in a bowl, um, a measure of water, which wouldn't even fill a shot glass, yeah. put it in the microwave. He'd put up with the five minutes, take it out, sit on the couch, crunch through the crunchy bits, and then he'd savour the soggy bits in the bottom, which was actually cooked pasta. Oh, oh. so half cooked, half not cooked pasta, but but the stuff that was cooked was cooked badly? So Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. And I used to just say to him, why do you put out with putting it in the microwave? Just eat it straight out of the packet. Yes. Yeah. So would he put like a <laughs> scoop of Dolmio on there or something, or was this just like raw pasta? Raw pasta and sometimes he would go to the extent of putting some parmesan cheese on there. Oh, but... la da <laughs> Yeah, la di da But he was a growing young lad. He just needed to get it in there. I've seen a lot of people who've eaten um, the spaghetti. Yeah, just raw the, spaghetti. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't get that. No, I don't get it. I used to do that oh, yeah. when I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah. I think we all did, yeah. But um, combining the two. And I so, know. The best part's obviously the part you save for last, which is the soggy pasta. Yeah, I know, but the best thing about pasta is the sauce you put on it. Oh, well, that's it. The, the <laughs> pasta is a vehicle for the sauce. Correct. Mm. And... Like half dry, half cooked pasta. Wow. There is a zero. Of your here. brother might be really nice, but I think that's like a, a psychopath red flag. <laughs> sort of thing. <laughs> Thanks, Louise. Sorry. I feel like we're scratching the surface here. Yes. All right, thirteen twenty four ten. We want to know is the way somebody eats something an yes. absolute crime yes, so in your eyes? Not talking about the food. We're talking about the consumption mm. of the food. The way it's uh, eaten. Because right. called thirteen twenty four ten. Some tickets to Fringe up for grabs. Nathan, Nat, and Sean. Podcast. We're discussing the way people consume things, inspired by the lady that was captured at the Australian Open by Josh Garlop, um, eating a hot dog by breaking a little piece of the sausage off and pop- popping it into her mouth yeah. rather than just picking the whole thing up and biting it like yeah. the rest of us do. Yeah, Welcome yeah, to on. Consumption Crimes, everybody. Uh, Petra is in Mount Pleasant. Hello, Petra. Are you reporting <laughs> this crime or are you the perpetrator? <laughs> Good morning. No, I'm reporting it. Okay, okay um, Petra. What behalf, have you seen? Um, my daughter eats Toblerone only when she melts it in the microwave first. <laughs> she cannot oh. eat the hard Toblerone. So she, she won't snap it off with her yeah, teeth. She won't break a bit yeah. off and eat no, it. No, she always breaks a triangle off, pops it in a little bowl, microwaves it until it's runny. Yeah, really runny. And then she eats it with a spoon. Okay, so I'm trying to think from her point of view. It is like it's a lot of corners that could be it's potentially a lot, yeah, dangerous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. 
I don't. You know. I've never heard of anybody with a Toblerone-related injury, well, though. Because they're dead. Really. <laughs> <laughs> no, she, they? she just likes the. She doesn't like the hard texture. She lo- she really loves it when it's runny, and she can eat it with a spoon. Is it all her chocolate consumed in this manner, or is it just the no? Toblerone? Only Toblerone. Wow, blow me but over. But by with the, the way, anyway, how old's your daughter? She is now twenty-five. Hey, who under fifty is eating a Toblerone? Or anybody who's been through Singapore Airport. I know. You have to. You I know, but like, do you, yeah, do you, I don't you knock back, ever? I'd never knock back No, you don't knock back a Toblerone, no, but, you don't buy one. but do you buy a Toblerone? No. Anyone in this? Sure, uh, uh, Harry, do you buy a Toblerone? No, no, no. Natalie, do you buy oh, a I wouldn't have bought a Toblerone for Yep, Toblerone, no. Years. Me, Toblerone. Uh, Ruby, do you buy Toblerones? Oh, she's not listening. I uh, say so Amy's um, husband Amy? does. Amy, Amy oh, come to the thing. Alex does every Christmas. I do. I do. Seasonal. Yes, that's his Christmas chocolate. He's a seasonal. And he chocolate. loves it and he puts it in the fridge and he l- loves eating it hard. Oh, okay. Sorry, he, oh, he loves hard. eating it hard. <laughs> <laughs> you should, get, you should get him some corn. <laughs> 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 oh, Ruby's sisters love it too. Yeah, it's a Christmas right. time. It's a Christmas treat for them too. Oh, well, that's when they're at their ripest. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Beth. Right. That's right. They're, they're in season. Why are yeah. Toblerones like... Seasonal. For seasonal. Why <laughs> like do people they put them with Christmas? For saw... me, I bought Ferrero Rochers with Christmas because yeah. it's that gift you give oh, someone when you don't yes. really care what they think. Well, you could buy them a Toblerone next time. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe a giant Toblerone. Jen's in tapping morning, Jen. Good morning. How are you? Great, Jen. Hi, Jen. Um, okay, who eats what the wrong way? I eat pizza, strangely. Oh, oh here we go. Um, I pick all the little bits of individual topping off yes. and then I kind of scrape the cheese and the soggy bit of base off with my finger and eat it off my finger and then I roll the plain base up and eat that. So you myself. deconstruct a slice of pizza yep. before you eat yep. it. So you'll pick off the, yep. say, the, the, the topping, the, 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 the ham, the, mi- the, 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 the mushroom and all that sort of stuff, yep. and you'll eat that first. Yeah, and, and then, then I'll pick the, cheese, the clumps of cheese off, yep. and then yep. I'll scrape the soggy base with the with the tomato paste off. With your and finger? That, and then I'll, yeah, I'll like <laughs> slide my the... finger along the bottom of the base and like pick it off with my finger, and then I'll roll the What's triangle left? up. Jen, can I say to you right now, I haven't seen you do this, but I know it's disgusting. It's wrong. It yeah. would look. You would be sickened watching someone do this. Jen, are you enjoying this? <laughs> yeah. Because it sounds it's like, delicious. you know, when people don't like something, they're picking it yeah. off individually. Yeah. Um, well, I don't like the flavours all mixed in together. And so if everyone's like, oh, let's get pizza, I'll go, yeah, okay, we'll get pizza. But I eat, like, one piece while everyone else I know, exactly. Because, like, so you're literally <laughs> taking an hour yeah. to... Yeah. So, yeah. well, you, if you've got a slice of pizza and it's got, say, capsicum, mushroom and salami on it, will you pick all the salami off first and yeah. then all the mushroom? So you, you only yeah. like your flavours, like flavours together. Only on pizza, though. All the other food, I'm happy to eat the flavours all together. But on pizza, I just like picking off all the individual bits. So I'm guessing you're a, you're, you're, a th- you're a thin crust girl, aren't you? I, oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I think it would be very hard to yes. roll, roll And you couldn't even approach a stuffed crust. A stuffed crust. <laughs> Imagine her just sucking it out like marrow from a bone. <laughs> 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 you would do, Jen. Thanks, That's Jen. That's pretty gross, actually. Yeah. Um, tickets to go and see Briefs, Dirty Laundry at Fringe World. Jen, you're going to take that out because it's, it's pretty different than what we heard. But we will sh- shout out to Bonnie Louise Petra, who are uh, also going to be in the running to live free for 23. In and if you want to download our daily podcast, because uh, Bonnie was talking about the corn, Nathan made some great suggestions or remarks. It's easy and to you're going to say where your mind sits. It's one of those things where the words are coming out of your mouth and you just have to keep going. It's the Nathan, Matt and Sean podcast. I want to talk about an issue um, that has now been resolved. Mm. Uh, it was happening at a Clarkson Parkson. Hey! <laughs> it, it sounds um, exotic because yes. it's called Las Ramblas. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, From Spanish. Barcelona. Now, mm. a resident had been complaining about a noise. That's the noise. That's the swing, Sean. The noise of a swing. Now, uh, people knew... The sound knew, of children having fun. The people <laughs> knew that there was a resident that had complained about the noise and they were shocked to find, whether it came from this resident or not, that the swings had been padlocked together. <laughs> for the kids today. Ah, that's how I'll stop it. So no yes. one could make that noise. Oh. Now, uh, the local council had to come down. Mm. Uh, they lubricated 
the swings, oh, took the nice. padlock off. So they saw a problem, they came and fixed the problem. Solution focused. focused. Uh, but we thought it was pretty funny and we just thought, um, who can we get on to speak about this situation? Straight to the top. Straight to the top of Wanneroo. She's the mayor. Her name is Linda Aiken. Hello, Linda. Hello, how are you? Good morning, morning Linda. Linda. Your Majesty. Um, <laughs> oh, no, don't you dare call me that. I'm just the mayor. Oh, yeah, I know, but we were talking about it earlier. I asked the guys mm. if you had those um, bedazzled jewels that you yes. get as being a mayor. The in WWF um, a wrestling belt around. Yeah, yeah, wouldn't you wear that out to various gigs just for the show? <laughs> No, I only wear it in a council meeting or at a citizenship ceremony. The rest of the time, it's locked away. Yeah, but, but, but okay. But what if you like, what if you want to go to a restaurant and get a bit of a discount? Or a good you, table. You, you'd chuck it on, wouldn't you? Going to the shops? Nah, nah. nah it's it's too blingy. No. Oh, no oh, it depends on what you're wearing, obviously, Linda. Yeah. I guess. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, and does the mayor get her own car park everywhere she goes? Like. Does, well, surprisingly, I often do. Sometimes I don't, but I often do, yeah. Mm. Okay. That's the perk. That's the perk, mm. yeah. Well, um, uh, Mayor Linda, let's pop down to the park. Yes, um, we're down to yeah. Lust Rumble, Lust Park. Yes. Uh, did you actually hear the noise from the swings and was it uh, uh, loud enough to uh, warrant, this warrant a complaint? Look, I haven't heard the noise from the swings. Um, I saw the article just like you guys, yes. and um, I thought about it. I thought, I've had people complain about the cockatoos squawking across the road. <laughs> yes. You know, um, I, 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 <laughs> there, there is a name for it. I've looked at it, and it's called misophonia, yes. And, it's, yes. and it's people who really can't stand specific yes. noises. Yeah. I mean, my daughter won't let me eat pork crackling because she sure. can't stand the noise that makes when I eat it. You know what I mean? Do you know people that suffer from that condition that you're talking about, Linda? Uh, Some people have it to such a degree that they have to have someone at their workplace have a chat with another worker because they listen to the way they breathe through their nose. Oh, my um, gosh. Yeah, or like they... We're looking at Sean at the moment. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Linda, but surely this resident hasn't just well why did they live next door to a park like did the park was was the park built after they moved there or because if you do have an adverse reaction to listening to swings don't live next door to swings i would suggest yeah i i don't know the situation but anyway before he bought there he would have known there would have been a park and there would have been swings there um and and really probably it would have been more cost efficient to use lubrication yeah, rather than, pad- than padlocks. Is. Yes. But um I, I understand where he's coming from, but you know, we have to look after everybody <laughs> and I'd rather kids out playing on the swings yes. than sitting in front of their iPads the whole time. Yes. Um, but we are sympathetic and so we've tried to do everything we can by lubricating <laughs> yes, yes. repeatedly, repeatedly the chains. I don't and think we've now had a mayor say we are gonna cut this, this up and times. use it all week <laughs> <laughs> They've actually had two our contract lube mobile to actually come by and give it a regular lubing. <laughs> well why not? Why not? Yeah, but but we 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 are going back to our manufacturers and just seeing if there's anything they <laughs> can do to really? minimise the sound. <laughs> but but you know, um, I I would rather see kids being healthy and being outside. Mm-hmm. I know it's school holidays and you've got the teenagers around and everything like that. They'll be back at school soon. And um, but it's better that the they're doing healthy silent. stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. They're causing yeah. so so, Mayor Linda. I, I saw that uh, in, in your bylaws. There's so many different rules and regulations mm. when it comes to noise complaints and when you can use stuff and yes. blah, blah, blah. But if people yep. are coming at you with swings and stuff left, right and centre, is there a point where I know you have to appease uh, the ratepayers sometimes by going, yes, we're going to take care of it and we'll look into it. Is it a case where you just go, yeah, piss off? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, or, yeah, it's, yeah it's, when, it's when Linda's up late sewing muzzles for cockatoos. <laughs> We got to tell people to get as, a grip. As you know? a city, the staff deal with everything that's within their control to deal with. Right. And <laughs> and so that's why we've been out there and lubricated it, and that's why we're going to the manufacturer to see yeah. if there's something that we can do. I know. You know, sometimes yeah. things get squeaky, you yeah. know, yeah. and yeah. and um, but what about maybe we need solution, to look at- Linda. Why don't you just give him some earmuffs? 
Well, we would need to discuss it with him. I haven't met him. Um, but if he suffers with misophonia, like my daughter does, yeah. I can understand the tension. Yeah. But at the same time, we serve the whole community mm. and we'll do our best to mm. help him with his situation. Yeah. But we'll serve the whole community. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's important. I think moving forward, looking at the manufacturer to see mm. if you can get another product is the way to go. Because, um, I mean, I'm, I'm worried about you. What's your lube budget? There for the <laughs> well, how expensive is Vaseline? <laughs> well, we don't know, I mean, but you can We're be using other it stuff. The there. Volume, you can use stuff are. that's edible. I'm sorry, are you, uh, different flavors. I love. <laughs> I love how Linda thinks you're Vaseline. I swing. <laughs> not the CRC or the but WD40. WD40. Oh. Well, WRC is not that expensive either. You know. Uh, yeah. oh, I tell you what. We know oh, the, the mayor of lubrication, uh, Linda. I tell you what. I'd vote for you, Linda. Yeah. Every day of the week, again and again. Every day of the week. You're doing yeah. God's work, Linda. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you you yeah. have a good day, Thank guys. Keep so that Linda. lubrication going. Uh, we'd like to talk to people, right? Because yes. here we are, and you know, we are yes. we are demonising this guy. I'm thinking it's a guy. The guy. I'm, guy. I'm going children. with the guy. I'm thinking it's a man. It's a grumpy old man. Um, but yet, I mean, the sound of a yes. swing going 24 hours a day, it would end up driving you insane. No, I think it's over the top. Also, it's not going 24 if hours you've got a day. That, what's it called? Missing something or yeah. Oh no, you're, you're very yeah. You're very, um, and she uh, was like, "I love me yeah. so." Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah. Miss a card. But, you know, but you, have, you, have you ever had? Have you ever had a noise that is just like non-stop, and it might just be quite simple, but yet after a while it drools into your brain. This is what this guy yeah. might be going through. Very cool. That's what we want to talk about. Thirteen, twenty, four, ten. We want to know if you've had to put up with a simple noise or if it's happening right now, that drives you absolutely insane. When you complain about people go, oh, it's the only sound of a swing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you're like, yeah, but you don't understand. That swing, it just drills into my brain. Yeah, did you fix it with lubricating the <laughs> device, the pole? If you've got a good lubrication story <laughs> too, hit us up, why not? Yeah. Nathan, Nat and Sean in podcast form. We're talking about the, the noises that you just cannot bear. Mm. Like the swing in the park in Clarkson yep. that drove a man, we presume, to padlock the swing so the yep. kids couldn't use it. Woman, so we're all, oh, what a grumpy old no. bastard. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Well, then we're thinking, oh, wait there, that noise all the time, it might make you insane. So let's go to Gemma in Alabrook. <laughs> hey, guys, how are you? Hi, Gemma. Gem. Um, simple noises that drive you insane. So we've got a lady that lives across the road two doors up and when we moved in a year ago, our other neighbour said, watch out, if your dog's bark, she'll put a letter in your uh, yes. letterbox. Yep. Anyway, we haven't received that yet because we're hanging on to that because she's got a blower vac that she <laughs> likes to use God knows how many times a day, but she doesn't hold it on. She goes, vroom, 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 vroom. <laughs> And she does, no, she does that before she mows the lawn. So then, of course, she mows the lawn and then there's grass. So guess what? Let's get the blower vac out again. Vroom, vroom, vroom. So you know what she's doing with the blower vac when she's not doing it for the grass? Or where she's blowing? No, no, she, she, she's just there. I think she just likes turning the button on and off. Oh. Maybe it's more enjoyable for her, I don't know. But we're on holidays because we, we work and we see her every afternoon out there. And then we're on holidays out the back by the pool with our water feature on. Beautiful serenity until we could hear about three times a day. Have you got a letter ready to go yeah. straight back at her, Jen? Oh, we're, I'm telling you, that's why we're hanging on to this, because if she mentions our dogs, which we think are actually pretty good, we yeah. thought, well, we've got something to come back yes. to you with. I love that you've got it re- locked and loaded. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, that's right. <laughs> with a barrel in her face. <laughs> okay, that is uh, too yes, funny. Yes, no, Thanks, I Jim. hear you too. Hi, Melissa. Good morning. Hi. Morning, Melissa. What's oh, yeah. the noise, Melissa? It's the radio. Oh, we're well, sorry. Melissa. <laughs> 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 Talk to us. Yeah, sorry. What's going on? No, it's when I'm at work. It's a colleague, and this colleague sits right behind me, so the radio actually faces me. Yeah. And I can't concentrate. I can't do my work. So, so I get in work early and leave late just so I can get through my work. I didn't realise that someone would be allowed to have something like that without using it with, like, you know, with headphones or something. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, no, not in that office. Um, is she, is it, what station she got on the radio? I think 96. Oh, well, that's uh, that's terrible. No isn't wonder it? We, we're sorry if you're suffering. Oh, God. it's all eighties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, we're too young for that. So I don't know. <laughs> that's a great point. Oh, we're just exactly. in we're just we're just in our thirties. So yeah, I wouldn't even know what some of those songs are. <laughs> 
I only know Kylie Jenner. And, I know, but for the love of God, Melissa can't do any work. TikToks. <laughs> yeah, tickety tocks. Look at us go. Thanks, Thanks, Melissa. All right, 13, 24, 10. Is there a sound yeah. mm. in your world yeah. that is just unbearable yeah. to you? To everybody else, it might just be a regular sound, but yeah. to you, it is unbearable. And um, if someone at your workplace has um, gotten over on the radio, mm. just shut your mouth on that. That's let it right, happen. exactly. <laughs> just soak it up. You're yeah. so lucky. So lucky. This is a podcast of Nathan, Nat and Sean. Sometimes in your life there is a noise that you have to hear repeatedly that drives you nuts. Yeah, this is uh, what happened at a park in uh, Clarkson. Uh, the guy that was complaining to the local councillor about this was so enraged, we think it was him, uh, that he went and um, padlocked these swings together. And we think it's a guy too. We have no real information no. about the person complaining, but we think it's an older no, well, a, man. A woman would never buy a padlock. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. Well, what's she doing in Bunnings? Exactly. She should be a kitchen oh. warehouse. She'll hey, go straight to the lube. Yeah. Here's <laughs> Jess <laughs> from Ferndale. There's Morning, no Jess. Of that right now. Oh. Hello. How are you guys going? Great, right, Jess. Jess. Now, what's the sound that you can't stand? Um, so, obviously, being summer, sitting by the pool, I've got two young kids, one and three, and icy poles, and my three-year-old eats it with his teeth. Oh. And my teeth are <laughs> highly sensitive, um, so it just goes through me, the sound of teeth going through an icy pole <laughs> and that grating noise. Are we now, talking like a funny face or something, Jess? Um, it's the cyclone. Yeah, the, oh, yeah. 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 So it's a real grating mm. noise. It's a tough one, isn't it? it? Because it's not like your child is doing something roll, no. wrong, but yet I'm guessing you want to tell them off. <laughs> and you love them less. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get full shivers and goosebumps. Like it, I just, like, react, full body reaction. And have oh, you tried to it. get get him to stop? Um... I've tried to get him to lick it, but he's, he's just a teeth eater. <laughs> yes, Jess, I'm going to put this down. Can I just say, Jess, we're going to get a grab of what you just said and yes. play it non-stop on the radio. Yes. <laughs> Jess, you're in control of the supply here. You know this that, right? This is true. You this can just not true. buy the icy poles. It's summer. <laughs> and kids are stupid around that age as well. Yes. Just tell them that the world ran out. Yeah. yeah like, just get an ice cream Yeah, one. it's late in oh. summer. There's none left. Oh, no. <laughs> don't get him you a freezer. You know how to check the freezer. I know. It's like when parents tell children about Christmas. Don't tell them until they like like they yes. have to know it. And yeah, until they're actually <laughs> actively asking. <laughs> Thanks, Jess. Thank Sharon's in Craigie. Morning. Morning. How are you today? Hey, Sharon. Great, Sharon. Sharon. Okay, what's the noise that upsets you? Oh, far out. You know when you have your bin days and your neighbours leave their bins out? My bedroom's right at the front of the house. So all during the night you hear the doot, 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 doot from the lid flapping when oh. the wind catches it. <laughs> It drives me in pain and it goes for days. They just stay take their bins in. Your interpretation <laughs> of a bin like threw me out earlier, but I want oh. sounded a bit like Axel Foley, didn't it? Can you do can you make the noise again for us, Sharon? <laughs> <laughs> so windy bin lids is what yes. I said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Windy bin lids. <laughs> <laughs> you can see oh, you're never going to be Michael windy Winslow, are you? Bin lids. <laughs> I can tell you, it'd be hard to hard to garner sympathy from other people with exactly. windy bin lids. Isn't That's it? right. That's so true, Sharon. I know those damn neighbours. Just take your bins in. Yeah, put them down properly. Oh, yeah, no, no, wind. no. But sometimes you know, on a windy night, yeah. bin lids slip up and down, Sean. Sure. And then you can't put a weight on there because then when they come and collect. Um, are, are you yeah. saying after they've been collected or, or when they're still full? Yeah, okay. Well, on the real windy night, yeah. yes. it's usually before. Yeah. But then even still, after the collection, if they leave their bins out, you just still hear that yeah. thud noise. And then yeah, there's, it's more resident too because it's because it's then empty. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're sorry for your suffering, Sharon. Right, we're with you, Sharon. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> we come on board. Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Listen up, you brats. It's time to get schooled. These three never study, but you should because it's time to get schooled. For the best back-to-school bargains on big brands, head to Watertown Brand Outlet, Wellington Street, West Perth. All right, you're about to get schooled today in chemistry. And up for grubs is a thousand bucks to spend at water. Well, a thousand bucks cash. That's from Watertown Brand Outlet, where you can do all your back to school shopping. Absolutely, Kate. There's only three questions standing in your way. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, Kate. Did you do chemistry at school? No. Nope. Oh, dear. Mm. You should be fine. You should be fine. I've got faith, though. Yeah, well, I've that's fantastic. Spirit. Yeah. Are you ready? 
uh, ready as I'll ever be. Okay. okay. Here we go. School's in, everybody. The symbol AG stands for which element on the periodic table? Oh, um... Quick. Uh, um, magnesium. Incorrect. It's not magnesium. Sorry, Kate. Let's we move, move on, on to, to Nicole. Nicole. Hello. Hello. Hi, Nicole. Nick. You get the same question, Nicole. The symbol AG stands yes. for which element on the periodic table? Uh, silver. Is correct. Well done, Nicole. All right, you get the next question. Okay. At room temperature, what is the only metal that is in liquid form? Um, gas, oxygen. No, no. Not. Unlucky, Nicole, Nicole, over to Dan in Churchlands. How you going, Dan? Morning, guys. Same okay. question, Dan. Obvious, no. At room temperature, what is the only metal that is in liquid form? Um, yeah, I've, I've got no idea. Thanks Thank you, Dan. Dan. Thank you, Dan. Jess is in my lines. Hi, Jess. Hello. Go now. All right, your question, Jess. At room temperature, what is the only metal that is in liquid form? Is it bromine? No, it is All the not. best for the future, Jess. Sounds like Thank that other Jess. spread that's supposed to be like Vegemite. Bromite's delicious. <laughs> Do you like that? Carolyn, um, no. hello. Bromite doesn't exist. Oh, hi, are you? <laughs> All right. What are you talking about? Bromite. Carolyn, your Bromite question. Does. We're stuck on question two at the moment. At room temperature, what is the only metal that is in liquid form? I'm going to guess Mark today. You would be correct. Oh, oh, and yeah. couldn't have said it more delightfully. Oh, I know. Yeah, Carolyn. Fair. So no, you've got two right. questions too. You get the next one right, you take the grand. <laughs> Righto. Oh, Here we go. Oh, jeez, I'm nervous for you. Here's your question. Regular table salt is a compound of what two elements? Regular what salt, sorry? Table, table salt. salt. Oh, table salt. Um, oh, shit. Um... Um, You've taken I'm too done, long, Carolyn. Oh, see you, mate, they J- say. Jess, hello. Morning. Hi, right. Jess. You get this right, you take the lot. Okay, Jess. Regular table salt is a compound of what two elements? Is it sodium chloride and potassium? Yeah. Well, We're looking to our you've, judge. You've said three things and it's only two. Mm. Sodium chloride? Yes, that is right. Yes. Well, okay. Can you say them first as well? Oh, my God. Sodium and chloride are the two answers. All right. Combined, they form sodium chloride. Indeed. Well said, that. Well said. <laughs> You've won $1,000. Oh, my goodness. I know. Thanks, Thanks to God. Watertown Brand Outlet. That's all yours, Jess. I feel so smart. I know. Well done, Jess. Right. Tell your friends. That's Chemistry. <laughs> you the man. The well woman. Uh, we're going to get schooled again tomorrow. <laughs> yes, we new are. Subject, new day. Oh, yeah. Study everything. Every class that was available <laughs> at high school, study it. Except you can probably rule out maths and chemistry. Oh, maths and chemistry are done. Everything else. Yep. Nathan, Nat and Sean. Podcast. The year is 2023, yes, and um, I would just like to preface what I'm about to say by uh, stating the fact that we are very easygoing, and we do not like to whinge. And we don't, we don't whinge, about we don't like to unless unless we're provoked. Normally, <laughs> So, one of Australia's major home good manufacturers wants their workers to be able to exchange regular public holidays mm-hmm. like Australia Day. Mm-hmm. For days they think are more important. It's our Unilever, Australia and New Zealand have been trying their interchangeable holiday policy since 2021, which allows employees to work public holidays in exchange for another day off. There are many places that are doing this right now. Woolworths is one, Telstra, Channel 10 also give their employees the option to to work on January 26th, acknowledging it's not a day of celebration for everybody. So so you could potentially have, uh, well, you could have the Queen's birthday for example, and um, where we have a long weekend, and yes. you go, no, I'm not going to, not going to work. I'm going to work that day, yep. and I'm going to use it in some other time. Yes, well, at right. your choosing. Yep. Yes, okay. yes. Well, you know, we say that's quite progressive. We don't get the Queen's birthday off anymore, do we? It's the King's birthday now, isn't it? Yeah, I don't she's know dead. I don't. Yes. Does the date change then? Well, I mean, well, she'll be dead, so it, she doesn't get any more birthdays. But also, it wasn't anywhere close to her birthday anyway. Yes, but <laughs> we, I, don't, I don't. I don't think we, we just get in September. We don't lose it, do we? No, no, no. But I think it just becomes the king. The king has a birthday, so I'm because we don't because we don't just collect them because then we would have we'd have like no date because there's been many kings and queens over time. 
Mm. Anywho, um, <laughs> turns out that our company has this policy. They do. So we can choose to work on Thursday yep. and then have... Uh, we can then take that public holiday at any time between now and the end of March is because the policy here. we oh. have um, a rolling That's argument really good. that it's no really good. one will be at work the Friday before that weekend. Yes, no cause, one. Because it lands on a of course Thursday, of course, yeah, everybody's yeah. going to yeah. do the bridge yeah. and make it a yeah. four-day so, long weekend. Anyway, we were alerted for the first time about this policy last year mm. in mm. which we said, oh, well, you know what? Then, bam, we will work on that Australia Day mm-hmm. Thursday I'm and then to. we'll um, have the Friday off. And we as in uh, me, Nat and Sean, um, Harry, Amy, Ruby, uh, Sam, yes. um, Ellie, Ellie, our entire team. Mm. Maybe the, not Ellie because there's still news. <laughs> oh, you're right. Ellie's <laughs> the glue that holds this whole place together. Uh, anyway, and then we, when we said yes, we will do that, we were um, swiftly told uh, that that policy is for everyone at Nova except for you. <laughs> So our boss, like, he said, oh, I have to bring it up. And then he brought it up. And then we said, okay, yeah, no worries. We'll we'll take the Friday off. And he went, (laughs) ha, ha, ha. Everybody else gets it except for you. And can I just say something right now? I love everybody that works up the other end of the building that does all, you know, the... The the, sales stuff. The the Sally stuff and the finance stuff Mm. or whatever. And I'd bet $100 million that on Australia Day, the ones that are choosing to have the Friday off as their public holiday, they'll be working from home. Mm-hmm. And I'm using air quotes. And well, the other thing <laughs> they Thursday. is that as salespeople, none of their clients are going to be. No, of course not. That's right. So it's not like they're going to client meetings or anything. They're not selling anything that day. So welcome nobody... to the three so day week for everybody else. They've made it a four day weekend. <laughs> I mean, great work. Ali, are you, Ali, are you in the grants? Are you in a grants in there? Like What's the question? Sorry. Oh. No, I'm listening. I just want to know exactly what you're asking. Are you in me. a grant? With what? We're that getting we ripped off. We should be able to get it off. We Absolutely. Should be able to it off we're well. ripped off. We're always ripped off. We're the hardest done we, by people there are. Were, were you offered, Ellie? Were you offered? Because I know no, I a couple of our members of our team are offered, which is bizarre. We want to know if you've been in a scenario where everybody else is getting something or they're offered something, except for you. <laughs> All right? Things that apply to everybody else. Yes. Except for you. We're going to open up the phones. I think Ross wants to call in. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to give somebody a, a $300 to spend at Matilda Bay Restaurant. Oh. Nice. Matilda Bay Restaurant's Cray on the Bay. Fresh, local, delicious crayfish. We've had it. Just $49 from now until the end of March. All right, fellow sufferers, give us a call. Everybody else is allowed to do it except for you. We're, it, it'll be like group therapy yep. because we're all in this together. It's Nathan, Nat and Sean and the podcast. You might think we live great lives, but we are being we're victimised downtrodden. by our bosses. Um, there is a company-wide policy that says if you do not um, wish to celebrate Australia Day on uh uh, January 26th, you don't have to. You can work that day and take a, a, a day off in lieu at any time between yep. now and the yep. end of March. Woolworths, Telstra, Channel 10, um, so many more um, uh, companies as well have yep. now taken this on board as well. Turns out, though, that we <laughs> can't do that. <laughs> uh, when we suggested we might want to, to our boss, he just, he literally laughed at us. Like, yeah. just giggled. <laughs> like this. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we want to know if everyone is allowed to do it, except for for you. This is Group Therapy. Sue, hello. Hello, Sue. Hi, how are you going? Good, Good Sue. Hello. Hey. What's I, the story? Um, I do fly and fly out work and we've just been told our project dates of flying in and flying out are changing. So we actually have to fly out on our, the first day of our roster day off. Mm. Everyone else in the team is getting paid for it. I don't. I was told it's part of my salary. So, oh, wait there, hey, but you're the only one that that applies to. Yep, because I'm the white collar worker, being the health and safety rep, and everyone else are uh, like operators of, of machinery. Oh, machinery and yeah. So they're, yeah, so they're blue collar workers, so they'll get paid an uplift for the half day and the extra night on site. I don't get paid it. <laughs> So are are you seen as um, an employee and they're seen as contractors? Is that how it's viewed? No, no, we're all employees. We're all on salaries, but apparently blue-collar workers get paid it and I don't. (laughs) Can't you just swap your collar? Do they (laughs) they stop you from eating at the mess on the night before as well? (laughs) 
I'm happy to change the colour of my shirt if it means longer pay. Oh. I know, but you'd have to you'd have to step out of the aircon during the day, so yeah, yeah, it's a hard one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, no, you're being stitched Ripped up, Sue. We feel your pain. There or not. Thank you, Laura. Hello. Hello, how are you? Hello, Great, right, Laura. Laura. What's everyone else allowed to do except for you? Stay home. So my husband and myself, we both have to go to work on public holidays, but we don't get paid any extra to do so. Oh. And we both obviously send our children to daycare, but there's no daycare, but we still have to pay yeah. for the daycare day. Yeah, the daycare thing, it really um, drives me insane. Me because too. That's just absolutely Can I just say... Because it's not costing them anything no, to have the daycare closed for that day. <laughs> no, no. I'm just really waiting for there to be a disruptor in the daycare yeah. um, sector who will come in and look at things fairly and go, OK, we're not going to run with this because everyone else does. Yeah. I think that people would f- would would line up I know. to be part of that. To not pay on a public holiday when kids don't anyway. go. You know? know? It's crazy, yeah. so, it? so can you tell us about the why you have to work public holidays and you don't get a Guernsey with that one? Uh, we both work in aviation, so public holidays don't exist. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. People like, fly all the time. <laughs> yeah. Now, do, you, do you not even get, like, double time or anything on the public holiday? No, it's just um, you, you will work and it's in your salary. You don't get any extra days off That's... or any double time. And aviation is in, like, um, you know, one of the big air carriers? Yeah, my husband's a pilot and I'm a flight attendant. Okay. Do you oh, ma- yeah, okay, okay. Can you, on those days, do you just hate everybody that's going off on holidays? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good unfair. <laughs> Laura, it's a funny world. Like um, In the sporting world, it's the same. And I remember yes. speaking to um, guys who have left Fremantle in recent times in white-collar positions. Yes. And I said, you won't l- you won't know yourself. You'll have a public yeah. holiday. Yeah, that's right. Hey, Laura, I want to ask your opinion quickly. This is something completely different. I was reading an article last night um, that this woman um, was, you know, like I was so excited that she was um, flying. And, you know, for her it was a big deal. Premium economy. Yes. Um, to go on her honeymoon. She said the one thing that ruined it, because, you know, like um, she was acting like she was in, uh, in first, first class. And I think that was just gorgeous. She said the one thing that ruined it was the woman that was across the aisle from her took her shoes off and her feet stunk. Oh, and I they just that. reeked the entire <laughs> uh, entire day. As a flight attendant, what do you what do you do in that scenario? Can you go and tell someone that their feet stinking to pop their shoes back on, or do you or can you not step in? Oh, I don't know. It's so awkward. How do you tell someone they smell? But they should not because they should well, know they feet, smell. If your feet stink, I just keep it be common sense. People should know what's acceptable and what's not. Like yes. you still like you wouldn't take your shoes off at the shop. I know, but oh, so you say that. But they but do people it. Do yeah. yeah. So so or like at the, people do it at the movies. Like yeah. I think some people just don't have. Common courtesy when it comes okay. to being in a small confined chair. Right, so Laura, so I'm on that one. flight, right? So I have pressed my buzz like b- bell, and so has Nat. She's on another seat, and so is mm. Sean. Three of us have said to you, "Excuse me, um, that woman's taken her shoes off and her feet stink. What's the next move for you?" Oh, I'd bump it. Go to the cabin manager. They can deal with it. <laughs> yeah, I'm so I'd on top. Right. Yeah. I like your attitude. Someone else can deal with it. I love it's that. a public holiday. I don't get yeah. paid enough to do it. <laughs> Go up the chain. It. Thank you, Laura. All right, 13, 24, 10. We want to know when everybody else is allowed to do something except for you and it feels like you are yeah. being 100% victimised. Yeah. You know what? We've been looking at this negatively too. Um, maybe everyone else... Um, oh, yeah. Maybe you get to do something that no one else gets to do. <laughs> I guess. Well, and it never occurred to us because, yeah. you know, the horrible Because we're downtrodden. We're downtrodden. We are. Downtrodden. This is the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Hi, Erin. Hi. Hi, Erin. How are you? Yeah, we're wonderful. Great, Erin. Um, are you the downtrodden one? Yes. We're yes, downtrodden too, so feeling. we'll really connect. <laughs> <laughs> so my friends and I, this was when we were travelling Europe way back in the day. Um, we were in... Um, Budapest, and yep. we thought we'd try the Turkish bath. Yes. Um, cool. So <laughs> we were in there. We did the massage bit, which was traumatic enough. Yeah. And so when they hit you like, go, with branches and stuff? Yeah, well, they're, they're big, big ladies. <laughs> okay, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, my son did it only a couple of weeks ago, Erin. Hefty lasses oh is what you say. Hefty lasses, <laughs> yeah. It was, yeah, it was, they weren't. They weren't gentle, that's no. for sure. Yeah. Um, but then we went to go into the bath section, so the pool. So we went to our change room to get our bathing suits on, and this large woman kept stopping us as we were coming out, telling us to take our swimsuits off. Yes. Mm. And we were like, no, no, we're just going into the pool. And she's like, she's 
like literally flicking like my friend's two piece, and she's like, <coughs> off. <laughs> and we were like, no, no, <laughs> no, no, we're just going into the pool. And there's people walking past us with bathers on. In bathers, yes. <laughs> and she made us. There was a group of us, and she made all of us. So we're literally walking out with these little flannel things, You're naked. You had a flannel on your flannel. She forced you guys to go nude. <laughs> We're like sliding up the wall to find the pool, and we get to the pool, and most of the people are in bathers. So, so what? Why? So why? what was the deal? Well, you, they, you were a Westerner, so they. Yeah, you know, I don't annoyed. know. There was there were some that were clearly regulars, and they just didn't care. like the, a lot of Europeans. They don't care. They don't. They don't eyelid at it. So but, gonna, are you telling me that all it takes to get you naked is one hefty Turkish woman <laughs> <laughs> and you relinquish all of your rights? She was big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you wouldn't argue with her, Nathan. Erin, <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. All of you are Sue, Laura and Erin in the running to live free for 23, which is great yes. news. But Erin, you're going to walk oh, away Aaron. 300 bucks to spend at Matilda Bay Restaurant. Matilda Bay Restaurant, Cray <laughs> On the bay, fresh local crayfish, just $49 from you can now wear, until the end of March. You can wear clothes, though, Aaron. Oh, so well, I know. Like... To be honest, we don't know. We've not been there for a while. <laughs> you just do what oh, they say. Lovely. You just do what they say, Aaron. Yeah, all right. All right. Thanks so much. Thanks, Depending right. on the size of the woman telling oh, yeah. you. The Nathan, Matt and Sean podcast. Everybody Nova's free for 23. Thanks to Liberty. Loans for free thinkers. Get ahead in 2023 and free think your dream home. Car or holiday with Liberty today. Eligibility and conditions apply. All right, here we go. It's time to put some people in the running for Nova's free for 23. Like Ian. Hello, Ian. How are you? Ian. Oh, good, Ian. You Ian. don't need the money, do you? An extra thousand bucks a week, surely. Of course I do. Everyone does. <laughs> Ian, um, we had um, an Ian this morning report some fog yes. to Ali. Was that you? Yes, it was. Oh, <laughs> Ian. Ian, the fog guy. Ian, Ian thank you for your service. Ian. Ian, I questioned that because I was looking at the windows yeah. and Steve Alcock and going, Come Sean on, didn't blue believe skies. you, Ian. He was calling you a liar and all other names, Ian. It was crazy. It was only about 50 metres you could see in front of you. It was that bad. Yes, really? It's a see, 50 Sean? metre foggy pocket, Sean. Just imagine the world outside Sean. those windows, Sean. I can't, actually, now. No. Yeah. If Sean can't see it, he doesn't believe it, Ian. Ian would buy a leaf blower to blow the fog away. <laughs> <laughs> Ian, what would you spend an extra thousand bucks on well, if you got know. that every single week I for this year? I told you, a leaf blower. Well, I got married in September last year, so I wouldn't mind taking the wife for a honeymoon. Oh, oh somewhere, that's right. somewhere foggy. What's what's Mrs. <laughs> Ian's name? Joanne. Joanne. It would have been funny if you said Misty then. <laughs> so uh, she would have somewhere she'd like to go on a honeymoon. What's the answer to that, Ian? The Europe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, they're wrong. not happy with Bali anymore, are they, Ian? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Good luck. You're in the running, Ian. Well played. Uh, Vicky is in Morley. Hello. Hi, guys. Hi, Hi Vicky. Vicky. How are you, mate? Oh, I'm well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, great. Just talking to a foggy Ian. Eh? <laughs> it's a bit of a thrill for us. Have you got any weather Actually, to report to us, Vicky? It was really foggy at about 6 o'clock this morning when I was doing my walk in Morley. Well, where were well, you where with the report the to Ali? Here we are. We didn't know that about <laughs> Morley's fog situation, what <laughs> Morley's fog crisis. <laughs> Yeah, yes, well, it was, Nathan. Vicky, so, yeah, so what would you do with your extra $1,000 a week? Pop on down to the Galleria? Talk to me. Ah, uh, well... Yeah, I think it needs all the support it can get. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love the Galleria. You do, you're a fan. I'm... I do, I really love the Galleria because you can always get a park there and you know it's you know, you know, we're, you know we're, just, we're, we're teetering yeah. on the edge of something great happening. Any day now. Exactly. Yeah. Are they refurbing exactly. it or something? Or What's that? Are they refurbing it or anything? Oh, it so? would have to be in the mix. And then, like, you know, because, well, like, Karen Up's fantastic too, but, like, everyone wants to go to Karen Up. Morley's yeah. like, you know, people are like, you know. Well, you still... live on the edge when you go to Morley, don't you? <laughs> Well, you know, I don't like to know how a book ends. <laughs> right there, you don't know what's going to happen. I know, you feel too safe at some of those other shops. Right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you can get your shopping back You know, knowing car. your car's going to nice. be there when you get out. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is, yeah, like, no, so well, predictable. Well, yeah, you're carrying up, you can't remember where you parked it. <laughs> no, at at Molly, you don't know if it's going to be there. <laughs> Nathan, Nat and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au. Nova.